Welcome everybody and today I'm talking about this camera which is the Canon M50. Now I have been thinking a lot about mirrorless lately, some of you will know that, uh, but I'm still using my trusty Canon 1DX for my wildlife photography. The problem with that camera and many DSLRs, two things I would say, one is the noise of the, the shutter and the mirror that the camera makes and the second is the weight, I tend to have a bit more weight with them as well. So it got me thinking, could this camera, which I actually use for vlogging, in my videos, the M50, could this camera cope with certain subjects? I should mention that this video isn't really a re review, it's not an in-depth review on this camera. Uh, I'm going to show you my experiences in the field photographing roe deer with this camera, uh, but I think it will help you in terms of advice for general wildlife photography as well. Now I have given this a little bit of a test in the past for bird photography and very quickly I could see the limitations in terms of focus, just sort of general speed uh, and also the lag. There's a bit of a lag there which I'll talk about later in this video. Now in terms of the lens I decided to pair it up with this with lo lots of you will have seen before, the Canon 400mm f5.6 fixed lens no image stabilisation. Now I thought this was a very nice uh, combination. I've got very small very light camera that makes virtually no noise and then I've got a very light lens as well. That seems like a really good combination for approaching road deer to me. Um, you do have to have a mount, you'll see a mount there between the two, so you'll need this EOS M mount adapter because this lens, this old EF lens, will not fit onto the M mount of the M50, so you've got to have an adapter for the two to work. Overall weight as well seemed very very useful in terms of being on foot approaching the deer because a lot of the time you need to stay incredibly still. It's very very common. Uh, they've suddenly spotted a bit of movement when I've got closer and I've had to stay completely stock still in a certain position often holding the camera and that becomes very difficult to do with a lot of weight so that's going to make it easier as well. So despite all the limitations which I knew about, I just I just thought this might cope okay with slower subjects like the road here. And also it would be useful uh, for people out there who may be looking at getting the first camera, uh, something a little bit better, and just to see you know how this performs. So once I decided I was going to give it a go, why not? Um, it was a case of configuring the camera. Now I've only ever used this really for video in the past so it took me a bit of time to configure it for stills photography. So I decided to do pretty similar to what I'd do with my other, other camera uh, for road here was to put it on aperture priority so that's AV. So I put it on that mode and then the ISO uh, I went to auto ISO which they often do for subjects uh, in changeable light. The only difference difficulty with this camera, the M50, uh, is that it doesn't appear you can set a minimum shutter speed. So you can set auto ISO which is great but then it appears that it just keeps rising if the light drops, the ISO just keeps going higher and higher and I guess we'll just go to the maximum of whatever it can do. Uh, you can't sort of change that, you can't select a minimum shutter speed as I would do with the other camera. So it's just a case really of keeping an eye on the ISO and seeing you know how high it was going or I would set it manually and just do it that way and then I'd know exactly what the ISO was at all times. Now I set it on uh, continuous, so it's got a continuous frame rate. I went for the low continuous frame rate. Now in terms of the focus, this is probably one of the main things to talk about with this camera. Um, I knew that the focus had limitations, I never expected it to be fantastic and you know in terms of acquiring focus and how accurate it was and also I knew that the AI servo was probably going to make that worse because it sometimes can on cameras, it can sometimes uh, hunt on the subject and not be as accurate. I prefer like a one-shot focus a lot of the time, I think it locks on better. So for that reason and certainly being in this habitat with some of the backgrounds and grasses and things, I decided the one-shot focus would make the most of the opportunity with this camera. Uh, the focus point, I, I, I tried this with other things, I tried a wider focus point and then smaller and then the smallest and I found for me, I just found that the smallest focus point works the best. It's just like a, a single AF, so I selected that for the deer. And one of the really annoying things, this will probably have happened to some of you, is that there's an option in here and if you don't switch it off the focus will keep hunting. So it's like you put the lens on and it's just automatically hunting all the time and it's really frustrating. And it does it in fact if it's servo, even if it's on one shot, it will still, still do that. And that's because 
there's uh, an option in the menu that you need to switch off. So if you go into the menu, you'll see continuous AF. And that's not referring to the type of focus, the way it's focusing. It's basically saying the camera's just continuously trying to focus all the time, regardless of what you're doing. Um, so if you go into that, continuous AF, and disable that, uh, finally when I figured out how to do that, that switched it off. And what that means now is that only, only when I uh, engage the shutter, half press the shutter, does the focus engage, which is fantastic. So the big question, of course, is how did this camera get on in practice in the field? Well, there's a number of things to talk about. Uh, the first one is the weight, just the weight of this kit, this camera and lens, which was just really, really nice. Uh, it was so much easier to carry around. And what was important as well is when I got closer, um, you know, where I had to stay still, which was uh, definitely happened in one situation where a group of deer got a little suspicious and they looked up and I had to stay still uh, kind of <laughs> with the camera to my eye half knelt down and I had to stay in that exact position staying as still as possible not moving until the de deer went back to feeding and felt comfortable again so with the older camera I would have been more difficult it was easier to maintain that with this amount of weight uh, the sound absolutely fantastic just made hardly any sound at all which is perfect for subjects like deer Now I was using the mechanical shutter. Um, you can set an electronic shutter, but I think it's quite complicated to do it. Uh, I just stick to the mechanical shutter, which is very, very quiet. And even though it makes a little bit of sound and I could hear it, I don't remember any instance where the deer reacted. I never had a deer react to the sound of that mechanical shutter that I remember. So that is a massive, plus as well uh, in terms of focus so this was going to be the big one now it definitely had some issues and i feel like if it had been on ai servo then those difficulties those issues would have been even worse now using the one shot autofocus with this uh, with this lens some of the time it locked on okay so there were situations where if it was if it was straightforward and the background was more out of focus and there's nothing in the way then it was pretty good it would lock on and it was fairly quick fairly accurate and it was decent and um, the problems were where the background was more messy and particularly where there was anything in the way so if there's any like grasses flowers around the deer in front of the deer but even around it to some extent then the focus often had problems and this was definitely an issue uh, and also just in terms of focusing on the head so sometimes I'd focus on the head and it would still lock onto the body. Now this happens with a lot of cameras, it's not unusual, uh, but I felt like it was worse with this one. So even though I was focusing on the camera, uh, sometimes just center focusing and not recomposing, it would still somehow lock onto the body. And you know, if I tried to focus on the head and recompose, you know, obviously the same thing. So uh, that was the main issue was with the focus. Uh, in terms of the exposure, you know, you could still change the exposure, the exposure compensation. Uh, you could do that in the camera. I didn't realize you could do these things looking through the viewfinder until later, but you can if you just press the little set Q button that brings up pretty much everything I think you can change the focus um, you can you could change the white balance and you could change even the focus point where the focus point is you would just press that little button down there and then you'd move use the toggle and you can move the focus point in a different position if you wanted to try and vary your composition so that was great you can still do everything for you through the viewfinder which is very important for me just make sure that you close the back close the back that way if you've got the screen out on the back then your nose is probably going to hit the screen and it might not it might not work as well so just close that up completely um, going back to the weight obviously the weight was fantastic being able to handhold for this subject one thing I found really difficult was keeping it steady um, it's just really strange I have experienced this before with certain equipment and um, even with my best technique and just trying to, to relax and just work as hard as I could at keeping this combination steady I just really struggled I felt like I could never keep it as steady as I wanted to um, now maybe that's because it's something to do with the weight distribution it could simply be that it's so light I might sound a bit strange um, 
some people will know what I mean. I think if you have heavier equipment, um, and like heavier telephoto lenses, it's almost like a bit of a dampening effect. It's almost like maybe it, it kind of pulls the, the camera down a bit, whereas with this, it, it doesn't do that. And I just feel like it's harder to keep it stable. But I certainly felt that myself when I was out in the field. One of the other main issues shooting with this camera was the lag. Now this was really, really frustrating for me. Now, if, if you know how to, if you think you can switch this off, let me know, because I couldn't find anything in here that allowed me to do this. Well, basically you've got this kind of lag, which you get with, often get with mirrorless cameras. So when I'd first put the camera up to my eye, um, it would be black and you couldn't see through it and there's a lag again maybe like half a second when it kicks in and then you can start shooting so that was a frustrating that was a frustrating thing but then also there's a lag when you're shooting with this um, so I would take the picture and then there'd be a lag it's like it sort of tries to play it back maybe it goes black for half a second uh, and if you half press the shutter then it'll kick in if you take a picture and leave it i think it takes like four on on this anyway when i did it it took like four seconds to go away to start shooting again if you half press your shutter then it will kick in faster but there is always that lag there i think it'd be really bad for anything moving continuous well i have tried that last year actually um tried to photograph a a running road here and it's just it's, it's just strange to me it's kind of like always like this lag there as you're shooting and you don't feel like you're seeing everything uh, moving as it's happening you kind of can't feel if you're traveling traveling you can't feel if you're tracking the subject as well with the lag it feels like you can't quite tell if you're keeping up with it and the other thing was the reach so um, with this camera with a 1.6 crop factor if you put a 400 millimeter lens on there it's effectively giving you what looks like a 640 millimeter lens, which is really, really useful for wildlife photography. And I'm not going to go into it anymore. Lots of people talk about how the crop factor works, uh, but essentially looking through the viewfinder in the field, it's giving you more pull, pulling power and it effectively looks like a 640 millimeter lens if you put this on. And finally, the other issue I had was with the battery. Now this was really my fault because I just went out with one battery battery and completely forgot because it's just an, a strange thing for me to do shooting in this way I didn't take an extra battery um, and look luckily the battery only ran out at the end of the shoot so I got some uh, really nice images had a fantastic experience but towards the end of it the battery did die and I'm sure if I'd been shooting with the DX the camera would still be shooting now in terms of the images I had a look on the back of the camera uh, I could see they, they looked reasonably sharp but they just didn't seem to have that clarity to me I uh, got them back on the computer and had a proper look now overall the quality of the images sort of i'd say for me um i'd call it borderline um so from what i'm used to shooting with a full frame dx you know i could really see a drop off in the quality for yourself if you're if it's your first camera or you're moving up from um, a more entry-level camera then you're probably not going to see that you know you're probably not going to feel the same as i do uh, but generally in terms of the images they just wherever i looked however sharp they were i think even when they were the sharpest they could be i just felt like there was always a softness there was always a softness there to it um, and i could just never get that real sharpness and clarity uh, so that's a little bit frustrating especially how when you have a fantastic experience with roe deer which i'll hopefully talk about in another video uh, but to have that and not be able to do it justice you know not to have uh, a camera of better quality to shoot it with is a little bit of a shame the focusing some of the images weren't sharp because of the focus not the overall quality but it was the actual focus um, and again it was just situations where it just didn't lock on properly um, it didn't lock onto the subject at all in some cases and focus on the background or it really struggled on the head particularly and uh, have a very sharp body but definitely a slightly out of focus head. And then the other thing is the ISO. So I was very aware of this before coming out to shoot with it. Um, in terms of the quality of the camera was 
you know, if I put the ISO up too much, it's gonna make things even worse. So I was very aware of that, but uh, shooting handheld and sometimes the amount of adrenaline that I had, I was having to keep the shutter speed fairly high. So I was keeping the shutter speed around 500th of a second, sometimes more. Uh, and to do that in the light I had, I had to push the ISO, I had no choice. So the ISO was pushed up to, often it was around 1250 or 1600 ISO. Now I personally think uh, that was affecting the images a little bit in terms of the overall quality. I did take some where I pushed the ISO down to 800 with a slower shut speed just to see if I could, you know, use really, really good technique, keep everything solid, but use a lower ISO for better image quality. And I think there is a little bit of improvement there. Now, it'd be really, really nice to test this camera to do the same thing with the road deer, maybe another subject, but probably with the road deer, and bring the ISO down even more, down to 400, possibly even down to 200, and then just see what the quality was like at that ISO, and just see how much better it was. But overall, in the field, how do I feel about it? I feel like it, it's, is, is it fantastic? No. Is the focus brilliant for this kind of, subject in changeable light in this habitat no it's not fantastic can it be done yes are the images good enough it really depends on again you know your view um, everyone's going to have a different view of what is sharp enough and what's too much noise for me personally it's kind of borderline and i'm really happy to get those images i'm glad i was able to photograph them i'm glad i can show you and on the screen i think they look pretty good uh you know on a computer screen etc but if they were blown up or if maybe it's on a big screen at a talk then uh, i wouldn't probably be too happy with them so a uh, bit mixed there. So is this the right tool for the job? I think it can be. I think if you try and get the most you can out of the camera and the best lens and the best technique, and certainly if the most optimum quality to you is not an issue, and it's as much about the experience and just getting a, a decent record image of that moment, then this kind of combination is absolutely fine. If you've got an M50 yourself, please put in the comments box your experiences with it, specifically for wildlife photography. And uh, if you've tried it for deer and roe deer, that's even better. Give me some feedback. Let me know how you got on. Let me know what you think are the strengths and the weaknesses of this camera. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.